Hi friends, welcome back to the channel. My name is Becky and today we are picking out my October TBR. <music> It's time for October and I don't know about you, I am so excited. October is easily my favorite time of the year. I love fall, I love Halloween, I love, I love everything about this season. So I am here to pick a relatively spooky TBR. But before we go ahead and pick that, let's quickly go ahead and check in with last month's TBR. Now, if you remember, I did not spin the wheel last month. Instead, I played Bookopoly as a part of Becca's Bookopolathon, and I did okay. <laughs> I was doing fine for a while, and I got to the point where I had five days to read four books. And instead, I organized my library and made a brand new TBR jar, which resulted in me not <laughs> completing the TBR. This is what my TBR kind of looked like. I got a decent chunk of the books read, which I'm not mad at. I had Across the Green Grass Field by Shawnee McGuire and The Sea Witch by Katie Roberts. And for physical books, it was a pretty hefty TBR. Of those books, I have managed to read the two ebooks. I've also completed Pride by Evie Zavoy, A Song of Wraiths and Ruins by Roseanne A. Brown, Girls Made of Stone Glass by Melissa Basherdose, One by One by Ruth Ware, God's Grave by Jay Kristoff, and I have started Dark Dawn by Jay Kristoff as well. Meaning that I have not started or read um, A List of Cages by Robin Rowe, It Will Fall, or The Star Daughter. If I was going to use technicalities, I have technically started It Will Fall. I read the first two chapters, but I have not read any more. I wasn't super jiving with it, but I had the intent to restart it and try it again. And I did miscount Bookopoly, so I told myself I would have two books I did not need to read, and technically those were one by one, and um, A Song of Wraiths and Ruins, but I could bend the rules a little bit and count these. I was debating if I wanted to use my technicality and carry Dark Dawn over and then count these as not needing to read and, and just say that I did complete my books and I didn't need a punishment. So what I think I'm going to do since I cheated in a couple other months this year, I'm not going to cheat this month and I will give myself nine spins instead of eight. And part of that, that is because I have some really short books that I want to get to. And part of it is because I feel like I could have gotten this done and I just chose not to. I mean, I'll be, I am allowed to do other things to just read, but I'm going to go with the nine spins. And if I regret this later in October and I don't get to all the books, you guys can yell at me and tell me that it was my fault and I could have made my life easier. I'm not going to allow myself to put Dark Dawn on the official TBR either. I did start it in September and it was a former wheel book. I don't know why I'm making myself work harder, but I am. So we're going to actually now get into the spins. Now I did shake up the prompts a little bit. I have the wheel slightly more spooky. I have a few fun prompts that if they come up I will explain and I have some of the usual prompts and then some updated ones I've been wanting to add for a while. So Without any further ado, let's go ahead and get into our first spin. All right, and you guys get to pick my first book. Um, I am going to go ahead and put a poll on Twitter. Um, editing Becky will add in the books. I will let you all know at the end of the month what my poll pick wise. Um, if you want to go ahead and vote for whatever book I'm going to read, it will be on my Twitter. My Twitter is at drinkreadblog and I will have the poll up for let's say a week after this video goes live. So I will also have that tweet pinned down below so you can just go ahead and vote. Let's hope this is not a sign of things to come. Roll number two. We have 20 to read in 2020. I feel like this has come up every single month, but we're keeping with tradition. Now, again, this is why I said I could not carry Dark Dawn over. Dark Dawn is on that list of 20 to read in 2020. 
but I had a feeling this was gonna come up, so I brought over the last of the books. So we have Tower of Nero, which is not out yet. My copy is already pre-ordered. I am doing one of the virtual signing then I get a free signed book as part of that so mine is on the way over the other books I have are these um we have Priory uh Wiki King Queen of Nothing technically Cruel Prince isn't on there but I wouldn't need to reread it so I just brought it over Last Name Sara and The Black Prism I don't know if I'm going to finish these um by the end of the year. There's a chance I will if the stars align, but I don't know if it's gonna happen. I will say I am tentatively planning on getting four of these done this month. Well, I guess five if you count Dark Dawn, but um, I don't wanna jinx myself. So what I'm going to do is pick the most strategic one and the one I am most likely going to finish this month. And that is um, Cruel Prince and Wicked King. Again, this is technically not on the list, so you are on the list, but again, I need to read this one first. And um, I'm picking this one because I know both of these work for Rocky Horror Upon Prompts, which is the readathon I created and am co-hosting in October. The announcement video is above if you want more details. But I know that Cruel Prince and Wiki King work for a decent chunk of the prompts, at least the ones I'm going to try to do. So I'm getting these on the TBR now. All right, row number three. We got Mood Read. Wow. For any month for this one to come up, this is probably the best month because I have a huge stack of spooky books I desperately want to get to. Um, the stack is pretty sizable. There's like 15 books in it. So I am so happy that Mood Read came up. So now hopefully I can take any book that did not make it onto the TBR and um, put it as my mood read again in next month's TBR to review what my mood read is, but I have a freebie. Yay! Spin four. Okay, I am so happy that Contemporary came up because... Romance Book Club 3, Crazy Stupid Romance, comes out at the end of this month and I so need to read it. I know this one went on my August, yeah, my August TBR, I didn't get to it, but I am getting more comfortable with reading and prioritizing my ebooks and my work schedule. I've officially like figured out how to balance everything and I'm not uploading a video every single day this month. So I will definitely be prioritizing and I should be able to get to Crazy Stupid Bromance and I am so excited. Um, synopsis, I always forget to do that in these videos. Um, I'm pretty sure you all know what The Cruel Prince is about, but Crazy Stupid Bromance follows two side characters from the first few books in the series. You have Alexis, who's the owner of a cat cafe named Topines, and you have Noah, who considers himself a digital hacktivist. Um, they were heavily featured in the um, last book, Undercover Romance, but they both show up in the first book. This is a friends to lovers romance, and I'm really excited for it. So now we have number five. Yes, I'm so happy this prompt came up. Okay, so this was heavily inspired by uh, Cody from Cody's Book Corner and the plethora of TBR games that were out there. I definitely had a ton of fun playing Bookopoly. I really want to find a way to continue to either play Bookopoly or to try out some of the other fun games without completely like changing up my monthly TBR as I do really enjoy the wheel. So I did go ahead and add a TBR game prompt to it. This month... I am dying to play Play Your TBR Right. So we're going to play Play Your TBR Right. This is Gavin's TBR game. If you guys don't watch these videos, you are missing out. They are so fun. They're like tense. Like you're just as tense as Gavin is. I find myself like guessing along with him to see like even if he doesn't get it right well I have gotten it right. It's super fun. I love it. It's a great game. Highly recommend that you check it out. But it's time to play this month and I can't wait. And I have gotten a few decks in subscription boxes, but as it is October, I'm going to use the witch deck that we got in the um, Fairy Loot last September. So for those of you that don't know how to play, play your TBR right, basically what you do is you take um, playing cards, shuffle them up pretty well, then you lay out five of them, 
with the back up and then you just simply guess if a card is higher or lower than the card you currently see. I'm to figure out how I'm going to do this without like changing my whole setup. I have the deck freshly shuffled and what I'm going to do is put the five cards onto this whiteboard so that way I can like hold it here. Now for the terrifying part. The book I want to read. The book we are playing towards. The book I get if I win will be The Monster of Elden Haven. This is um, by Jennifer um, Gesprit. This is a torn novella. Mine is an art copy but I got it through Arts for Trade well after release. Um, and this is it's a little novella about um, it says dark fantasy, a twisted tale of revenge set in an original world as oily and real as Jack the Ripper's London. That's all I really know about that one. It sounds good to me. I've seen some pretty good reviews for it and I think it'll be great for the spooky season and it's short. So this is the one I'm playing toward. This is the one I want. The one I get, I'll get if I lose is a book that I have put on so many TBRs. You guys are yelling at me to read it. I have been called out for not having read this book. And it's the one I'm tentatively hoping to get to this month. But I don't want to jinx myself. But it's also the most intimidating one on my 23 and 20 TBR video. And it's this one. It's Priory. I'm so mad I haven't read this one yet. I also know that I wanted to kind of slow my pace down when reading it, only read it a little bit at a time. And when reading the Nevernight series, I've kind of honed in my annotation style a little bit more. So I think reading this will be a more enjoyable experience. And I do think in October I will actually have the time to dedicate to reading this one. Um, conversely, I think I will have, I think I will find myself struggling to try to read this one in November or December, specifically December. So I would love to try to get this one out of the way this month, but I really don't want it to be a wheel book. I really would love to just, you know, pick this one up because I felt inspired and even span it across a couple of months. But the cards will decide. Gavin, I understand why this game stresses you out now. So let's go see what our starting card is. So we are starting with a three. I feel good. Let's guess that this is higher than a three. Yeah. All right, it's a nine. Okay, so a nine is higher than a three, yay. Now I will be also playing Gavin's rules. So if there is a double, I will pick another card and guess if the new card is higher or lower than the double. And I will use a swap if needed. So we have a nine. I'm gonna guess that's lower than a nine. Is it lower than a nine? Is it lower than a nine? Oh, I can't look, I can't look, I can't look. <sighs> Yay, okay, it's a four. Okay, a four is lower than a nine. All right, I'm gonna guess higher. And a four, higher, higher than a four, higher than a four. Okay, it's another four. Okay, so again, Gavin's rules. So if there's a double, what you do is that you reshuffle the cards and you draw another card. And you guess if the new card that you draw is higher or lower than the double card. So because I don't have a third arm, I'm just going to rest this board right here. I'm going to grab and shuffle the deck in front of you all. And we're going to guess if this new card I'm shuffling is higher or lower than a four. I'm going to stick with my guns. I'm going to guess if this new card I'm about to get will be higher than a four. Go shovel. All right. Rain. I kept it flat. Let's go see. And it is... Okay, oh my gosh, I thought that was two. It's a nine. We're good. It's a nine. Okay. Oh my gosh. Gavin, this game is so stressful. I understand why you sweat every month while playing it. Okay, so we have a nine. Is it higher or lower than a nine? I'm gonna stick with my gut. I'm gonna guess it. It is lower than a nine. Is this card lower than a nine? Oh, it's not. 
Yo guys, we got a cake. I hope you guys can tell I'm shaking. I'm like, I cannot believe that just happened. Oh my gosh, okay. Not gonna lie. Right before I flipped, I'm like, but what if it was higher? I second guessed myself for a half a second. Oh my gosh, okay. So, priorities back in the TBR, guys. Me, it's October, my it's already something that scares me. Dev and I hate your game. Number six. Okay, meant to read in 2019. These are the books I have left on that list. I stared at that screen for far too long. Um, most of the books on there, while I do want to read, I'm not in the mood for for this month, but I decided to go with The Merciful Crow um, because this one follows um, people that are in different like bird class and the crows are the lowest ones. Now, they are looked down upon in the society because people believe that they are ones that have formerly like survived a plague which is why they are immune to the plague in this world which is why they are the basically the lowest class that just cleans up the dead now they also have the power or they have the ability to get people's memories i believe it is from teeth um i feel like of all the books on this this one gives me the most spooky ish vibe and that's kind of a stretch but I think it'll be fun to get to. I've heard some really good things about this one. And I know when I mentioned it last month, a lot of people said that this was one that they would like to see my thoughts on. So I think I'm going to go with this one. Time for seven. Okay, yay, one of the fun prompts came up. So we have Monster Mash. This is to read any book featuring monsters. And for this one, I think I want to read Sacrifice by Katie Roberts. I just bought this ebook the other day. It just came out and this is a smutty male, 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 female smutty book with vampires. And vampires are monsters, so... Time for eight. So pet pick. This hasn't come up yet, but pet pick is when I let the boys pick my book for me. Because that means I will have to unset up the camera. Okay, so I'm going to insert that clip in here now of my boys picking out some spooky books for me to read. Hopefully they were nice. Okay. Hey friends, it's time to let the boys pick a book for my October TBR. Um, the streets are over there, so they are mad that I'm taunting them. I'm just going to show you the stacks. Each boy got a haunted house spooky book I really want to read this month, a shorter Halloween read I want to read this month, a subscription box book I really want to read this month, and one of my 20 to read in 2020 TBR books I want to read this month. Um, so I have a pretty good selection for them all. I'm going to let Logan pick first and then Nitro only because Nitro is a little easier to hold. So let me go set up Logan stack. So here are the four books Logan gets to pick from. I'm going to hold Nitro. Okay, one treat per book. All right, Logan, go ahead and pick a snack. Go ahead and pick a snack, they're behind you. Over here. All right, Logan picked Mexican Gothic. Thanks, buddy. Here are Nitro's books. Hey, come here. Say. Hey, go ahead and pick a snack. Go ahead. Stay over here. Hey. So, wait, they're behind you. Okay. And Nitro picked the monster of Alpha Keep It. Thanks, buddy. Okay. So. Logan picked Mexican Gothic, Nitro picked Monsters of Elden Haven, and I'm going to pick Mexican Gothic. I was supposed to read this one back in September. I'm really, really interested. A lot of people keep talking about how good the ending was, and so I want to see what they mean by that. That could have been the end. That could have been the last book. 
oh, but no, 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 I decided to make it harder and get myself one more spin. So let's, um, let's hope that this final spin is nice to me. So here's spin number nine. Okay, so we're ending with Spooky Read. This is any book that gives me the spooky vibes. These are the spooky books I really want to get to this month. So we have Horror. This is my and Audrey's book club pick for this month. And this one has Haunted House vibes. Shadows Between Us, I've actually been saving for the spooky season. This one follows a girl who um, wants to woo the king. And apparently he's like... The shadow demon I don't know this is a fairy loot it looks cool and we also have deck of omens this is a sequel to the devouring gray this came out back in April I purposely put it off because the first book has super atmospheric spooky settings so I thought that this one would be good to read during the spooky season and I also have to reread the first book then you guys already saw monster of Elden Haven I have sleepy hollow I've been meaning to read this for Halloween for the past like three years so I hope that this is the year that I finally get to do that and the last but not least I have Through the Woods. This is a graphic novel of spooky stories and I randomly picked this up on Amazon and I thought it would be fun to read in the spooky season. If I have time or if I find myself like voraciously mood reading I will definitely try to read all of these but um I think I am going to go with the deck of omens for this one and I'll let the boys pick out another spooky read for me to read this month. So deck of omens like I said is a sequel to the devouring gray. The devouring gray follows the children of four founders of the town and the kids have to come together to help with this monster that is connected to the town and I'm really excited to see how this one um concludes the story it is a duology this one has um queer rep in it um, most of the characters are bisexual and there's also disability rep in here as well so we're not including crazy stupid bromance because I don't own that one physically we're not including my mood read and we're not including the viewer pick <laughs> and missing and we don't have my pet pick yet because I'm picking that after this video. Missing those four. This is what my TBR looks like for October. What did I get myself into? I am very happy to have a mood reader on there because I do have plenty of spooky books. I would love to hopefully get to mood read a couple of these since some of them are on the shorter side. And like I did mention, I do have the Rocky Horror Readathon that is coming up in the last two weeks of the month. Some of these books I did strategically pick for that, but um, there are some other books I would love to get on my TBR for that as well. My official TBR for the Readathon will be coming up. Um, in the middle of the month. I'm aiming to do it after my mid-month wrap-up so I kind of know where I am reading wise. I know where I am on these wheel books and hopefully I can make some stuff work for that readathon. But that is everything I have for this video. Thank you all so very much for watching. Um, be sure to let me know down below what you are hoping to read for October and let me know down below if you have any suggestions for prompts you'd like to see on the wheel whether we are getting into the holiday season for November and December or for future months I will be continuing the wheel into 2021 with some minor changes so definitely leave any recommendations for prompts down below I would love to know your thoughts. But that's everything I have for this video. If you guys enjoyed it make sure to leave a big thumbs up, hit subscribe to watch me attempt to take down this tbr um but that is everything i have for this video so as always thank you all so very much for watching and i will see you all with a new video coming very soon bye <laughs>